What's up guys, Dolmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to a new channel. This is Curious Droid, and I was asked to react to this, I believe it was after one of the Fat Electrician videos. Uh, I might be mistaken there, I can't remember exactly when I was asked to react to it, but anyway. Uh, it is the F-35, why is it the best fighter in the world today? Um, so yeah, I guess we're going to learn about the F-35 today. So anyway, link to the original video down below, and let's jump into it. To say the F-35 project has come in for a lot of bad press over the years is a bit of an understatement, with any number of critics and armchair pilots pitching in at every little piece of bad news that percolates through the internet. But that with the, the aircraft for. now being deployed by the air forces of the countries that have bought them, the real story of how good or bad it is comes from the it people nice. that really matter, namely the pilots that actually fly the plane every day and the air crews that look after them. This is why they think the F-35 is the best fighter in the world today. This video is sponsored by Royal Air Force Engineering. Now, if you want to learn more about working on cutting edge technology upon which the RAF relies, be that state of the art aircraft or communications technology, then head on over to the RAF engineering website, the address of which is in the description below. Although it's been seen by some as a replacement for three main aircraft, namely the- Man, it's kind of funny seeing the, the Union Jack inside of an American plane. The F-16, F-18E and the Harrier, now a sort Canadian of three-in-one plane, it's really three new planes that share the F-35 name, with some commonality between them, such as the cockpit, engine, parts of the airframe and avionics. Pretty much everything else has been specifically designed for the tasks required for each of the A, B and C variants. The A version... Isn't that standard? I would assume that's standard, or usually is it just the exact same plane with different mods on it. I, I, I always thought that they just, you know, would obviously like, you know, pre-build these differently for whatever they're doing, but I, maybe I'm wrong there. Is the lightest and intended for use with the Air Force with its conventional takeoff and landing. The B version is the heaviest and intended for the Marine Corps and navies like the Royal Navy and has a short takeoff and vertical landing ability, right. allowing it to be used from smaller carriers if required and makeshift runways closer to the front line. The C version is intended for use with the US Navy carriers and uses an assisted takeoff and arrested carrier landing. The F-35 is a so-called fifth generation aircraft because it has taken advantage of the technology which has been developed in the last 20 years or so. But what does this mean in practical terms? Well, to give you a very simple but effective example, you only need to look at model aircraft and helicopters in particular. About 25 years ago, in the mid-1990s, I used to fly model aircraft for a hobby. Now, at the time, model helicopters were the most difficult of all the types of aircraft to fly. These took a lot of skill and practice just to get them to hover above the ground and do basic maneuvers, just like the full-size ones. Much of the time it would all end up rather badly and you became an expert rebuilder as well as an expert flyer. <laughs> Fast forward 25 years and you can now buy toy helicopters and their modern equivalent, the quadcopters, from around $20. These are things that are... Tr yeah, these things have, have like, I, don't, uh, I guess it would, I don't know if you would call it radar. It's, it's like basically light sensors that keep it balanced and stuff. And a lot of them, it's literally like as easy as controlling something in a video game. Like, it's super easy. And yeah, they're dirt cheap. I'm honestly kind of, uh, I guess we're starting to see it now, but like more military vehicles designed like this. I guess, you know, it, it's kind of fascinating how in, in certain areas where, you know, civilian technology is able to produce stuff at large scale are just able to produce stuff so quickly and so advanced. Child could fly in the house and can even do acrobatic tricks of a touch of a button, something that would have been unimaginable 25 years earlier. So what has changed? The helicopters or quadcopter, be that a toy or a proper model, still works in exactly the same way as it always did. What has advanced hugely in this time is the electronics, namely the miniaturization of computers and the tiny gyros 
has allowed tiny autopilots to be developed but do the hard work of keeping the helicopter or quadcopter stable in the air and you just need to tell it to go up, down, left or right. Now imagine what you can do when you have tens of billions of dollars and 20 years invested not only into the electronics and computers but also software and high speed data connectivity. Man, it's honestly kind of insane how, it, just in my lifetime, how much air technology has advanced to the point where I remember vertical takeoff and landing used to be something that was like so advanced, even though some people wouldn't even believe it existed and they'd be like shocked if you mentioned it to them. And now you can buy that at Walmart. The F-35 is the closest there is at the moment to being a software defined aircraft, which allows it to change fundamental aspects of the plane's behavior whilst in flight and allows it to do things that were previously impossible. Although the F-35 is a multi-role aircraft, one of its primary goals, as some pilots like to say, is to kick down the door by suppression of enemy air defenses and to allow other aircraft in behind them. To do this, they need to know what they are flying into well ahead of time, with all possible information available to identify the target and eliminate it without being detected until it's too late. Pilots talk much of the increased situational awareness they have in the F-35, with far more information being gathered than any previous generation aircraft. In fact, they have been called a mini version of the AWACS planes, even though they have less powerful radar. Because of its stealth capabilities, the F-35s can get much closer to the threat and get a much more detailed view which is sent to the rest of the mission group, but this is only part of what they can do. Because the same aircraft are supplied to the NATO partners, pilots from the different countries can train and learn from each other, and this allows for a much more integrated unit when the time comes. The F-35 has been described as a flying sponge, soaking up signals across the electromagnetic spectrum, but whilst keeping its own emissions, such as its radar cross-section and the heat signature from its engine, to an absolute minimum, along with its stealth capabilities. Compared to previous generation aircraft, the radar on the F-35 is electronically steerable instead of mechanically. This is so fast that it can effectively do the job of a surface-to-air radar and then switch to an air-to-air -air radar and back again and integrate the data so that it looks like one combined radar view to the pilot. The F-35 has a Distributed Aperture System, or DAS. This comprises of six infrared cameras flush mounted to the aircraft skin, giving a 360 degree coverage to look for other planes or the rocket motors of missiles. That's it also crazy. has radio antennas embedded in the edges of the wings and the tail to detect radar from the ground or air. If any one of these sensors picks up a signal of interest, others are automatically trained onto the same line of sight to fill in any missing data. If a threat is a missile, the DAS can work out its position and course to locate the launch site as well as alert the pilot to take action. If a signal is determined to be coming from an area covered by the radar, it's automatically told to look into the same area to find more information about the threat. All of this is done without pilot involvement, and the information- Man, <laughs> that is so broken. I don't know if they have these, like, all I'm thinking about is like literally using this thing in a video game. If you were using this in a video game, it would be so busted you couldn't use it. It's literally like having hacks in a fucking video game. It's so broken. Mission is prioritized by the central computer so that only the most important this auto locks on is tells you where everything pilot. is. Wall hacks. This greatly reduces the workload that in a previous generation aircraft would have taken a crew of two to handle even though they would be working with much less information. This and the jet stealth capabilities allow F-35 pilots to detect an enemy threat at a far greater distance than before, allowing them to deal with it before the enemy even knows they are there. F-35s work in groups where all the sensor data is shared within the group's network and the command center. 
just four F-35s could cover an area of 130 kilometers deep by 200 kilometers wide. This fusion sensor information allows all the F-35 pilots in the battle space to see the same picture. If one F-35 picks up on a threat, all the others are alerted and the pilot from one F-35 can see what another F-35's sensor suite is seeing. All this makes it Man, almost ridiculous. impossible for an enemy to make a surprise attack on the group. Having multiple sensors on multiple aircraft that are linked together means that if an enemy is able to jam one, others are still available. And because of their network nature, other F-35s in the network can identify the source and launch countermeasures. This is why so- That is so fuck- man, every- literally everything he says about this is just broken as hell. Man. It's so funny, it's just- I, I, you know what the best part about this is? When it comes to US military technology, whatever they announce, you, you know they've had this for like 20 years. Like, I'll, I'll go, when was this thing developed? F-35. F I'm assuming it was developed like probably 10 or 20 years ago. Um, first flight, December 2006. It's 20 years old. Right? Like. Yeah. This thing's 20 years old. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, who knows what they have now because this thing is, was busted as hell and has been out since fucking I was a little kid. So much has been invested into making the F-35 as easy to fly as possible. The pilot has a huge amount of information about his surroundings at his fingertips, so if it takes all your time to fly the plane, you can't handle all this information effectively. Take the helmet for example, which is an integral part of a plane. This is custom made for each pilot for a perfect fit and is lighter than previous types for less neck strain in high G maneuvers. The helmet provides a 360 degree view around the plane, wherever the pilot is looking, and also shows all the relevant data the pilot needs overlaid in his field of view. The helmet can control the radar to track along the pilot's line yeah, of sight, like even video if hug. his view is blocked by the body of the aircraft itself, and can generate a fire control solution for guns and missiles simultaneously meaning that he or she can look through the body of a plane to see the target without having to change the position of the aircraft. The helmet also contains a night vision camera that shows flying at night to the pilot almost like flying in daylight, which greatly reduces the chance of disorientation. And it can also show the infrared image from the DAS cameras from around the plane, again giving a 360 degree coverage. Color weather radar data can also be shown on the pilot's visor to see thunderstorms, squall lines and fronts that also could be a hazard to the plane. The F-35 is also far more self-aware than any previous aircraft. The aircraft monitors its entire airframe and how well it's reacting. If it detects a problem, some of this stuff it will adapt looks the date. whole aircraft's flying characteristics stuff, to compensate. It can also do the same depending upon what the pilot is requiring of the plane and changes the way the... The, the UI stuff looking so to date is kind of an example of what I was talking about when like certain things get like... When civilians get access to certain things and they're allowed to do whatever they want and then you get like the civilian development, right? The, civilian UI is way better than anything we've seen in uh, at least, you know, declassified military planes. I guess that also kind of makes sense when you think about it because... I guess to a certain degree, right, just ergonomics UI would be important, but definitely not as important as it would be if you're trying to market something to mass appeal versus, you know, functionality for warfare, where it's going to be much more bare bones. The aircraft flies to make it easier for the pilot in demanding situations. Much has been made of early tests where an F-35 lost out to a 40-year-old F-16 in a dogfight, but the software controlling the plane has come a long way since then. At the 2017 Paris Air Show, Lieutenant Colonel David Chip Burke confirmed the plane's real dogfighting abilities by performing maneuvers that had previously been done in an F-22 Raptor with thrust vectoring. 
but this time in an F-35 without thrust vectoring. John Beasley, the Lockheed F-35 chief test pilot, said that the F-35 was as manoeuvrable as any other aircraft. He said that the Russian fighters are often shown performing amazing manoeuvres, but what you're really seeing are the skills of an exceptional pilot. But that the F-35 is an aircraft that everyone can fly exceptionally. Beasley also said that they used the Navy approach for test manoeuvres with a high angle of attack. That's when the nose is high in the air and the aircraft slows dramatically. One of the tests included turning off all the flight control limitations and getting the plane all wrapped up to a point where it lost control and then turning the flight control system back on and having the plane recover itself with little or no input from the pilot. The F-35... Man, I would not want to be the one doing that, especially like the initial tests for that. Because if that just, if that doesn't work, if something goes wrong and you just crash the plane and you're dead, I would not want to be the guy testing, <laughs> doing the initial testing on that. You know, you'd have to really trust your software to be the first one up there trying that shit. The Stovall version also shows that the flight control system can make the pilot's life much easier than the Harrier it replaces, as squadron leader Andy Edgell of the RAF can attest to. As an ex-Harrier pilot, he said that landing the Harrier on an aircraft carrier could be borderline terrifying, and hovering was like riding a unicycle. You have to continuously pedal or move something, whether it be your left hand, your right hand or your feet. The F-35B, by contrast, could hover by itself, hands-free, for as long as it had fuel in its tanks. Edgell was also awesome. the first to perform an aft landing on an aircraft carrier. That's basically landing on the carrier from the wrong end, a procedure that could be used if the carrier was dead in the water, but facing the wrong way into the wind for landings. Again, something that he said was really rather benign because the plane just adjusted itself to compensate to fly with the tailwind. The F-35B is also one of the few planes that can do shipborne rolling vertical landings using thrust vectoring and the flight control system to slow down and then come to a stop using just the computer controlled disc brakes. This would be used when the plane might be still carrying a full weapons load and a vertical landing could damage the landing gear otherwise. These are just a small selection of why many pilots think that the F-35 is the best fighter in the world today. And this is just the first foray into software controlled aircraft, something which we will see a lot more of in the future. Oh, but yeah. for now, the F-35 is the king of the hill. So yeah, I... I... That was definitely interesting to learn all about that, but the fact that it came out in 2006, even with its software updates, and you know, obviously they have some different variants, I already doubt it's the best one out. Because you see this so many times with the Americans, they don't, one, let anyone else get their hands on things, even if they're part of NATO, right? Even if it's a close ally like Canada or the UK or whatever, uh, until at least a decade or two after, you know, they've had it. Um, and then usually stuff doesn't get declassified, uh, you know, or the stuff that does become declassified is always so much better than what they told us they had. Or like, look at like something like the SR-71, which has been around for like 50 years at this point, or like the jets they had, in, you know, near the end of World War II, and just yeah. So it's definitely the best plane we know about today, or you know, if not, then it's you know up there. Uh, but I. The Amer they 100% the Americans have something way better that we don't know about. That's like some classified stuff that we'll learn about and, you know, something that probably came out like a year ago and we'll learn about it in 20 years, 15 or 20 years. But other than that, yeah, great video. Um, let me know what you think down below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.